Hi, I'm Derek from Bay RV Hire in Harvey Bay. Just like you to like to run through the Windsor Daintree motorhome with you on uh, how to set up. Just a quick one. So firstly, we set up with our power lead. Our power lead goes into this point here. Uh, this is when you're on a powered side of caravan parks or someone's home property and that sort of thing at all. So it's an easy plug-in pull out. When it comes out, it's now closed and finished. If you are at a, an unpowered site, uh, but someone has power in their, their uh, home or something like that, we do provide a, um, a converter that plugs into the home. You plug your power lead into this and you've got 10 amp power to run your vehicle. The next thing on the uh, Daintree motorhome is the toilet cassette. We do provide you with the chemicals in porter packs. You will be provided with enough chemical for your trip away. And to use the cassette, you simply lift the lever underneath, pull it towards you, and the cassette will come out. To empty it, take the lid off the top, point it towards your dump point, turn it upside down, and whatever liquid is contained in here will go into the dump point. And when you fill up, just put a little bit of water, one, one sachet of the chemical, and that's all you need to do. You're also provided with an 8.5 kilogram gas bottle, uh, which is a standard barbecue gas bottle with an on and off uh, turn of the knob at the top, and you must turn off when, uh, when you're completed or you go to drive away. This section is also vented, so there's a vent in here to uh, pr provide, oh, sorry, to, to uh, disguise any fumes that may escape and so forth, so they're not coming into the vehicle itself. This section also locks down. It key locks to prevent theft. And again, that's how you travel with it locked up. Water connection. When connected to your mains pressure water systems, um, hoses are provided for you. You simply plug on to here as you would a normal hose with a clip on, clip off. Uh, that stays there. You fill up your water tank on your on board, which is currently about 140 litres. You just put your hose in here, let it fill up, uh, and there is a gauge inside the vehicle to tell you that you are full. Otherwise, if you've got water coming out of this side of the vehicle, you know you're full. This is where your water tank on your vehicle is stored. It's stored under the seats of the inside of the vehicle. Uh, as I say, it's about 140 litres, plastic tank. It's not drinking water. It's standard tap water in a plastic tank, so I would advise you don't drink that water. We also provide all your hoses, your buckets, and electrical uh, equipment required, which is stored in this section here. There is also a jack and spare tyre uh, on, the, on the vehicle. You also, when you hire from Bay RV and Camplify, you have roadside assist as well with any breakdowns or any problems you may have out on that road. Okay, your driver's side entry door. It opens like a normal van. And to get in the vehicle, you'll see there's no grab rails and bumpers here, apart from the high one. There is a grab rail here. Also, I find it easier to get in by holding the steering wheel and pulling myself in. All of our vehicles are built on the Renault Master. They're all automatic uh, gearboxes, all run on diesel, standard diesel. To get to the filling point, you must open the, the passenger side door because there's the little flap here, needs to be do done open. Once we close our door, we cannot close that flap. So we need to open the door again and close it for security. Right, you've got a drop down table on the outside of the vehicle as well. They're not uh, built for extra uh, weight, so please don't put heavy objects or barbecues like things like that on there. Uh, one, the barbecue will burn the van and uh, they're quite costly to replace, um, so we wouldn't have to see you do that. And put the table away, it's just a case of put it up, turn the key, locked in place. The second thing we've got just here is we do have our battery control system. It's a dual battery vehicle, one battery runs the vehicle, the second battery runs the uh, house battery, it's called a house battery, which runs all the electrics inside the vehicle itself, such as your fridge and so forth uh, inside the vehicle. Um, we also do provide you with, um, uh, this is where your electrical leads will be stored and also your um, uh, awning uh, wind outs uh, and that sort of stuff. Okay, on the Daintree we also have an outside shower. A lot of people like to use this to uh, wash the dog down if you've been on the beach or wash your feet down if you've been on the beach. It is hot and cold. Uh, small shower unit comes out just for a, uh, a nice easy uh, clean up when you've uh, been out there and about doing your stuff. We also have a sullage hose connection here which is pretty straightforward. The stat two clips on there, just a push on, pull off, clip on and that gets rid of all of our wastewater out of our vehicle which is from the shower, the kitchen sink and also the vanity basin. 
Right, entry into the winter dane tree, uh, simply open the door by lifting the handle, comes towards you, the whole door frame will come out, including your security screen that's on the inside, and to separate your security screen from the main door, it's a case there's a little red button here, you push that, lift the handle up, separate the two doors, that door will now close, you can also lock it there in that position uh, to give you added security if you're sitting around or you have your little doggy inside or um, you want to a bit of a night breeze coming in. Okay, here you've got your grab handle to enter into the vehicle. As you can see, it's lit at the moment and um, it's quite, uh, quite useful of a night when you're coming back from um, dinner or somewhere like that to uh, have the handle light left on. So therefore you can see where you're going. You also, in, in these vehicles, get plenty of USB and 12 volt uh, points here. You've also got an external 240 volt outlet here for when on power and also an antenna in case you want to bring the TV outside and watch the footy on the outside. We're now on the inside of the Dane Tree, uh, so I'm just showing you all the points that, uh, that we've got for use here. As you can see here, there is a TV here, it's also a DVD uh, for use when you're travelling. You have a smoke detector up here, you have your air conditioning system with the remote control conveniently located next to the door. You also have your light switches that control all the cabin lights and also your key uh, and up down switch for the electric bed which we'll be showing you a little bit later in the video. As far as storage goes, the Windsor Danger comes with plenty of storage with cupboards open and, and locking. Um, they, they lock in place. There's plenty of drawers in place. This is where all your equipment is for all your, your electricals and so forth and we'll go over those in a second. The fridge is a three-way fridge which means it runs on 240 power, it runs on gas, it also runs on 12 volt. It will search for its own power source when you're, uh, when you're parked up. If you're uh, not on gas or so forth, it will then go to 12 volt. Right, good size freezer, good size fridge, holds a few beers and whatever else you're, you're drinking, lemonades. In the control panel here, we do have your two uh, plugs pointed in, uh, uh, put in. Uh, they're 240. One is running your TV, one is running your fridge. They're left on, of course. You also have a 240 uh, isolator here. If something goes wrong with your power system, this will trip as per at home, and you will need to detect and find out what it is. You have your power amps coming in for your uh, solar chargers and, and all those sort of things. Plenty of power coming in. You also have your tank gauge in here, which you do by prep test. It's showing us that we haven't got any water in here at the moment, but that's fine because we haven't filled it up ready to go. When you're free camping, uh, you will need to turn your gas on at the outside point. Also turn this point on here, which is your igniter for your gas to allow flow. That will run your hot water. If you are parked up at a, um, an RV site or something like that with power, you don't need to do that because it will be electric uh, hot water system. With all your, your switches back up here, as you can see, every light is on. So I've got everything turned on at the moment. Um, to turn anything off at any one point, you don't have to lift the flap. All you do is push on the front of the flap, but to turn it back on, you do need to lift and turn back on. So they're all the same. Um, if you're, again, if you're free camping, we need to conserve as much power as possible. So we would turn off as much as we possibly can if we don't use. Uh, being the fridge, we never turn the fridge off, of course. Um, so yeah, that's, what, that's an important thing that people ask about power, is um, what we do with power. Overnight, um, if you do need night, night lights and so forth, uh, there are um, a there is a torch provided, and we do say that turn all your power right off, which makes every light in the, in the van go right off. Uh, your Windsor Day Tree comes in with an internal uh, kitchen. Um, it does have three burner gas and a single burn a single uh, element of electricity. Um, it does come with all your controls and so forth on the front. There is a griller, there is an oven, there is a pantry, bottle storage, etc. whatever in there. Uh, all your drawers again is push and lock, uh, fry pan, fire blankets, all those sort of things are all provided in your vehicles for your safety. Um, with your sink, you have standard uh, thick mixer taps. Um, that just lifts up, goes there and you run your water. I won't be running water at the moment because I've turned all the pumps off. Um, so that's how you do your sinks. With your drawer systems, it's again push out, push in, push out. All your cutlery is provided, your cooking equipment is provided. Uh, you do have pots and pans, of course. Pots and pans are all in here. You do have basic plastics, cooking equipment. Uh, you do have plates, cups, bowls, all that sort of thing. 
And with the essentials, there are toasters and kettles. Up above me is our microwave, which can only be run when you're on 240 power, as per other vehicles, same as the air conditioner. So you've got your microwave, you've got a little storage compartment above it. The upper cupboards are operated by lifting the little latch underneath. That comes up, same as this one will come up. So there's the kettle for when we're on gas and we, uh, we need to bore the belly. Up under there, you've got just storage and so forth. You also have, under here, you do have a, a vent for your when you're cooking and also extra lighting under here. With your caravan windows, they're all the same. So we'll just show you this one in the kitchen. That is it with midi mesh on, so we haven't got any uh, any bugs coming in. Of a night, we will just lift that up, push that in, and that is the night light. During the day, if you want to open the windows, just separate the two surfaces, open the levers, like so, push to a position that's required, just wind one of the knobs in, into place, that will stay in its place, push it down. You can leave them open overnight if you wish, it's up to you, so that you don't have uh, midges and things coming in. To put that back in, you just take the tension off, let them come back in, fold them down, that is now locked. How to operate the toilet? Obviously lift the lid, do whatever has to be done. The blue button behind me here is your flush water. As per a normal toilet, you would normally flush. To release what's in the container into the lower cassette is just push this arm across, right? Whatever was in there has now gone down to the bottom container, but you must bring it back, otherwise that's open to whatever's down. There is a light on the side that will come on once the cassette is full, uh, and that will show you what's to do. You've also got overhead storage. You've got cupboard storage underneath. You've got storage through here. Let me just swing around for a second. Little flip mixer tap for your vanity. And in your shower, you do have a full size shower, hot and cold running water. You do have a fan, uh, an outlet, etc., etc., up there. And they have to do separate light switches as per such. All right, the bed set up. We have our table in the dining position, if you want to call it that way. Being of a height, you can sit on, you can seat four people here easily and sit around the table. The table also manoeuvres and operates to go either way, backwards, forwards, simply by pushing the handle just here. To take the table down to a coffee table position, ready for bed set up, we do put our foot on the black button here. They push that down, and then with a little bit of body weight, push down till it locks in position. Now that can be left in that position. There's plenty of room to walk around it, um, and you can have that set up um, during the day or overnight. While we're here, we're gonna show you how to set up the bed. So firstly, we remove the cushions, just a case of pulling them out of position, like that. And just while I'm here, you do have access to underneath your vehicle from under the seats. You do have USB points, power points on both sides. So that's there. These go on the ground here. They go. That one I hang on to. So now we're going to bring the bed down simply by pushing the uh, the button, the down button. This is the up button, of course. This key, as I said before, will be in its lock position, but it's in place, ready to go. So we're pushing the down button. The bed will come down all the way down. Now that is the bed height in our sleeping position. Now we would make up the bed. The bed is a double bed, and depending on which side you want to put your head, the reason I kept that one out is just so I could pop it at the end, just so the mattress doesn't slide backwards and forwards, and also it's a good little resting point if we, if we want our pillows to be slightly higher than, our, uh, than our, our bodies. You can also see here that you've got roof fence, you do so have a light in here as well, which will give you plenty of light if you're in bed and you want to see what's going on. You do that. And you can leave your bed fully made up while traveling uh, because it'll go up to whatever height you want. Uh, all above there is storage. As you can see, you've got camp chairs, camp tables, 
You've got privacy curtains and um, steps, etc., all up there. And to put the bed back, remembering this will be made up with your dunas and pillows and whatever else, you can put it to every, any level you want. But we'll take it up to traveling height. Now you can travel with your bed at that height, bearing in mind though it's low. So is the front cabin. Just be careful when you're going through here because a lot of people do hit their heads. Um, if your bed is fully made up, that will go up further and we will take it up further because we don't need it that low. All right, that's your bed back in its full traveling position. Putting the cushions back on. Just a matter of put them on. The Velcro will hold them in place. Same on this side. On this side. Bring the table out. Just put our foot on there. Up comes the table. You have a fire extinguisher for safety. You've got internal speakers, power points, privacy curtains. Everything you need to go traveling. Thank you.